Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is going to be kind of a life update slash what I'm going to be reading for the rest of the year or like my priority list for the rest of the year. This is also an update video from my video books that I need to read before I move to Japan. <sighs> a lot of buddy reads fell through after I posted that and I am so sorry. That's totally my bad and things were just very hectic then okay so yes I still love you all everyone who reached out to me to bunny read I am still super happy and thankful that you're in my life and we need to circle back around to those at some point a short little life update for me is that I am going to be moving to Japan still but I was supposed to be moving in September I was supposed to move to Japan in September so I was already supposed to be there now it's mid to late October now and I was supposed to I'm supposed to be in Japan right now but because of COVID-19 that didn't happen and so I am going to hopefully be leaving sometime in December or January that seems to be everyone's kind of rough estimates right now and so that's kind of what I'm going on and so this is going to be my priority TBR for now until I move if I do end up moving in December that's only like a month and a half away that's not a lot of time at all I'm not taking any books with me but I do have a fully stocked over 120 books on my Kindle. It's stocked. It's ready to go. But I am also going to be looking into Kindle Unlimited because with all these books that I haven't read basically on these two shelves and those two shelves, it's just it didn't seem like I would get a lot out of it but since I'm going to be abroad I think Kindle Unlimited might be the way for me to go especially for me to be able to read a lot of books that I own but won't be able to physically take with me. A little update um these are the books let me get them these are the books I said I was going to read before I left. Please hold. You guys can't see those. These are the books I said that I wanted to read before I moved to Japan. I've only read Wicked Saints out of these. I haven't read any of these other ones and I probably won't because I am really pushing myself to be, let's be honest, more realistic about my goals, okay? I'm not going to be reading these before I leave, but with Kindle Unlimited, I might be able to, you know, read these books while I'm abroad. All of those books were on my most anticipated reads shelf, which is over here. I have three shelves of books that I really really want to get to. All of these books I pulled off of that shelf from that past video. I did read this one. <laughs> this one was a buddy read and I loved it and I'm really glad that I got to it but here it is. The rest of the books I didn't read and will not before I leave. I will not get rid of them. My books are staying but I won't read them in the next month and a half or so. Basically the books I want to prioritize before I leave are all pretty much buddy reads except for two and I will get right into those. I want to read the next two books in the Ember and the Ashes series. I know book four comes out in December and so I still need to read um, A Reaper at the Gates and A Torch Against the Night. I don't know which one is book two. I feel like this one is book two. I might be lying. I might totally be lying. But these two I really really want to get to especially before December when the next one comes out. These two I am buddy reading with Noria from the Chronicles of Noria. Look Noria I remember to use your new channel name. Okay those are the first two. And Ember in the Ashes basically follows a girl who infiltrates a rebellion and then infiltrates this kingdom. She's trying to get her brother back. Her parents have been murdered because of their um, relations with this rebellion. Her brother is taken by this empire she infiltrates the empire a lot of things happen um Elias is the other POV in this book and he basically works for the empire or whoever he's a soldier he's a soldier Lila is a slave they are on two different sides of basically this struggle but somehow come together and I really 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 liked Ember in the Ashes so I'm really excited to get to these two before book four comes out Did I like put my books back as I like talk about them let's stay organized okay my next buddy read is The Damned by Renea Dia and I just finished The Beautiful. This is also a buddy read with Noria from Chronicles of Noria and this one follows a girl who moves from Paris to New Orleans after after she kills a man. She kills a man who tries to rape her and so she is now in New Orleans where she gets kind of cut up in this underworld and there's a lot of mystery aspect to this book but it still is very like underbelly New Orleans kind of 
spooky reads and basically all you need to know is that she meets a bunch of inhumans and so we need to read The Damned which is the next book. Is this a duology? I feel like it's a duology. Renee Adia is really good with duologies. Renee Adia loves duologies. I think The Wrath and the Dawn is a duology um and and Flame in the Mist is also a duology. I don't even I don't does she have trilogies? I'm not sure. I think she is like peak duology writer which is fine. She's good at it. It's fine. The next book that I need to read with Noria is Ruthless God by Emily A. Duncan. This is where this book comes into play. The only book from that original books I need to read before I move to Japan video, um, Wicked Saints. But we are going to be reading Ruthless Gods at some point. Book three comes out sometime in 2021. I think it's early-ish 2021. Wicked Saints left off on quite a cliffhanger, so I'm really excited to get to Ruthless Gods. And I heard ending of Ruthless Gods really just tears you apart. But Wicked Saints follows basically a girl named Nadia who can commune with the gods and in return they give her some powers like magic abilities. But this book is made up of two different magic systems. The other magic system is blood magic where the magic wielder cuts themselves and then combines their blood with pages of a spell book and with the combination of those two elements, their magic is then created. Nadia is, has been taught all of her life that these blood magic wielders are basically monsters, they're demons, they are just horrible human beings. And after she meets them, she realizes that maybe they aren't so different after all. And this has a lot of internal struggle and internal battles going on, especially with Nadia. But the path that Nadia and the other characters in this book takes is just super magical. And the world building for the series thus far is just absolutely amazing and so I need to read Ruthless Gods. Next is a buddy read that I may or may not get to before I leave. A lot of things are up in the air with this buddy read but it is The Empire of Gold by S.A. Chakraborty and I love this series so much. I still haven't gotten to The Empire of Gold. I am reading this with Noria and Lauren and Lauren is in Germany. She is working. I think she's a nurse and so she has just been really busy and then Noria is handling stuff on her end and then I'm getting ready to move basically. So lining up this buddy read has been quite difficult but if it's a buddy read that happens after I move it'll be either something that I hopefully get on Kindle Unlimited or it'll just be an ebook that I end up buying so I can buddy read this with them which won't hurt my feelings in the least. This is also book three in the conclusion of a trilogy of the the City of Brass where we basically have a girl who summons a demon. She thinks it's a demon when she's basically just trying to con people. She's trying to con people. The magic ends up working to her greatest dismay and they are then traveling to the city of brass. A lot of things happen. It is such an intricate world in fantasy and the characters are just so well developed even in book one that it's just a really great series especially for high fantasy readers. There's just so much packed into each book and I'm so excited to conclude my read of this trilogy. The next book that I am wanting to get to quite soon actually is Cricket Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. I do have a rant review up of the trilogy leading up to this duology. Check it out. It's pretty humorous if I don't say so myself. I just did got done with reading Six of Crows which is book one to the duology of the Grishaverse and I was on a live on Norio's channel where we roasted Six of Crows. Um, it was a lot of fun. It was just it was hilarious. We did have technical difficulties but we definitely made it work and Noria is just so creative with every video and every live she comes up with. So I really urge you to check it out. I will link it down below. But basically this series is a heist series and so we have a bunch of basically criminals, deadly deadly criminals. They are hired to go into one of the most well-guarded prisons and basically kidnap a prisoner out of that prison and bring it back to their town or city or hub of Ketterdam. So it's a huge heist and they're heisting, was that? I don't know if I'm using that word correctly. They're heisting a person. I really enjoyed the book. I will have my kind of thoughts and review of that book in my October wrap up so stay tuned for that. But I just really really liked it so much better than the trilogy and maybe that's why I like it so much. But I do need to read Crooked Kingdom. I hear that people get really emotional during Crooked Kingdom so we'll just have to see. I'm still not 
too overly attached to any of the characters so that's just gonna have to be I don't know I don't know if I'm gonna feel the full impact as other people did but I'm just really excited to get to it the ending of Six of Crows did leave it pretty open it was pretty cliffhangery and I'm just making up words as I go on this video and that is totally fine but this one is on my TBR for before I leave for Japan and I do want to prioritize it this edition was gifted to me by Noria also she's basically said hey Sarah you haven't read one of my favorite books how dare you I'm gonna guilt trip you with the gift of the books themselves so I have zero excuse the last two books is a duology also by Renee Adia and that is Flame in the Mist and Smoke in the Sun. There is just a lot of anger for me not being able to find these books in the same edition. It is, it's been driving me absolutely nuts for quite some time. I just, it's actually quite angering. If I'm going to be completely honest with you, I, this is angering. But anyways, um, and I have this on the list because I did read Flame in the Mist and loved it except for one small aspect of it. And then I just felt really discouraged to read book two so I want to reread book one because it's been a year or two and then read book two for the first time. And this series follows Mariko. She is on her way to her betrothed where when her convoy is attacked. Basically I think she's the only one that survives this attack on her convoy and she goes undercover as a boy to infiltrate who she thinks attacked her and her convoy and killed basically everyone. And there was... Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, this is the part where I was very aggravated that there was zero of this in the book where it says never mind her cunning or her skills as an accomplished alchemist. She's a samurai's daughter first. Um, It doesn't really this book doesn't really play on her father being a samurai very much. But the aspect that bothered me the most during this book is that nowhere in this book does it speak of alchemy, mention alchemy. Mariko is never, she never talks about alchem alchemy. She doesn't perform any alchemy. I'm a huge alchemist fan. Like anything to do with alchemy, I'm totally there. And there was none of it here. And so I went online, I was like, what's up with this? I, it does like, does it show up in book two? And people were like, no, it does not. So I don't know if that's something that um, was in like maybe the earlier drafts of this book and then maybe not taken out of the synopsis in the back. If I missed it somewhere, please let me know. But everyone else that I've talked to, which has been probably 10 to 15 other people, also missed it or yeah, I'm not sure what happened. But now that I am prepared to not see it going into this book, I do want to reread Flame in the Mist and then read Smoke in the Sun because I'm really excited to just reread book one because I really did like it. I really did. Um, and I really just want to finish the series and <laughs> call it a day, move on. Um, but this is Japanese inspired and I thought it would just be really cool to reread these the book one and read book two as someone who's about to move to Japan. These are the last two books and so that is my short life update and my kind of priority TBR um, for the end of the year. If you have a goal of prioritizing any number of books even if it's one or two please comment down below and let me know what they are. I'm really interested to know what everyone else is kind of prioritizing as we are coming up on the end of the year. This is a really really stressful time for me but I'm still trying trying to post videos every Tuesday and Thursday and so if you would like to subscribe if you haven't already please hit the subscribe button down below. Also the bell button notifies you when I do upload if I do get a little wonky with my uploading that'll definitely let you know and then please don't forget to like this video because the engagement is really what I need. But yes please like comment subscribe down below if you haven't already and I'll see you guys all next time. All love! Bye!